Motojitsu and I went over some of his low speed exercises from his master's riding program, mainly to get feedback from him for what I should practice on my own later. And he dropped a slow speed bombshell trick I had never tried. One I thought was for advanced riders only. But for MJ, it's a tool he has used for improving his own skills and for his students to make sure your skills are well-rounded and not too dependent on one thing. And he challenged me to start doing it. It can be controversial, and other instructors may disagree, but there's more than one way to skin a cat, and I think he's doing just fine. First, if you're wondering why I flew across the country to get feedback from Moto Jitsu, besides him being a fellow YouTuber buddy, Whatever you think of his delivery, he's a writer and an instructor I can respect. I knew he spent 11 years in the Marines, was a drill instructor for four of those years that had served in Iraq, which likely came with a no BS direct personality. As a writer, he has a knack for practicing and improving dramatically and quickly. Within his first year of writing, he rode 60,000 miles, took a course just about every month, and practiced so much that he was asked to be an instructor for the Total Control's beginner, intermediate, and advanced riding clinics, which he achieved faster than any other candidate. In order to improve, he says he practices doing the things that scare him the most in a safe environment, in the parking lots, so that when he gets to the streets, everything else is easy. Like the first time I did that side saddle craziness stuff, I dropped my bike probably six times learning that. Mm. But now I could do it with no warm up like I just did with you. That's fun. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm able to do that. I'm excited. We'll talk about the takeaways when we practice emergency braking and then the low speed exercises, which is where he dropped the challenge on me. Are you blinding I'm like, yourself? I'm like going blind. Yeah. Yeah, so huh. smooth increasing pressure on the front brake. If you're a numbers person, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 100. It's all about the front brake. Get the bike to stop as quickly as you can. On any bike, on any surface, it's the same thing in the dirt, ironically. Mm -hmm. Just, oh, let me ask you this. What? I was, I was going to ask you during the actual stop, so now I'll ask you now. Uh -huh. So again, live reaction, I didn't tell you I'm going to ask you this. After practicing emergency braking with you for a good half hour straight, you're stopping very quickly cool. and efficiently. All right. What if the first one you did was the one you needed riding here this morning? Yeah, could have been dead. It ain't gonna work. I would have busted someone else's like pristine KTM Duke 390 that he lent me. 2021. So I, so I tell people that whenever I practice emergency braking, you're getting feedback and you practice for a half hour, dude, you're gonna be stopping yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. But the first one he did, it took you like 20 feet to stop. Mm. If that was the was level. It that bad? Yeah. So if that's what you needed the first time you stopped, like, dude, it ain't gonna work out. Because now you're stopping very, very good consistently. But now let's say you don't practice any of this braking stuff for a month and a car does plot in front of you. You're gonna be, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. You gotta consistently practice. Yeah. It's a perishable skill. You don't practice using your brakes and knowing that feeling and getting that sensation and getting good at it. You're gonna hit a car, you're gonna hit a kid. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be able to stop the bike. So you have to consistently practice this. And the only way to get good at it, shocker, you gotta practice. What? <laughs> Biggest two takeaways I'd say that I got from uh, practicing emergency stopping was, I kept thinking when I squeezed all the way, that was it but yeah. I always had more room yeah. to squeeze. Probably the last couple of times, the most amount of brake pressure you had is probably close to like maybe 70, 80, but you still weren't at 100%. Oh, and number two, the other big thing was uh, to make sure you're in first gear. That way, just in case someone behind you uh, is like slamming on their brakes or you need to get away quickly, you don't want to be in third gear or, or worse, neutral. You want to be already in first gear so that you can take off quickly if you need to. Yes. So that was my other takeaway. So my whole playlist on emergency braking, like 11 videos all about it. Step one, just stop the bike. Step two, stop the bike and be in first gear with your eyes up. Step three, stop the bike, be in first gear and go. Mm -hmm. You know what step four is? We even go over it. What? The car pulls out in front of you and stops. You come to a stop, maybe you're in fourth gear, so you have to get all the way down to first. You come to a stop, but the car is still in front of you. But the car behind you is not stopping. Now you have to be able to take off and swerve. So there's four levels to emergency braking. Most people don't even practice one, let alone four. That's why I'm just like, uh, I, I, I'm very careful about who I ride with. Like, dude, you can't stop and you think it's dumb to practice emergency braking, you are not riding behind me. Mm -hmm. So don't be the rider that doesn't know crap about braking because you are increasing the risk of everybody crashing because you may not have control of your own bike. But whatever it takes to get you off of YouTube and go practice on your damn bike, that's the right answer to me. I want to make all of you old motorcyclists. You 
can't do that if you're dead because you don't practice anything and you think you're a hot shot because you took one course going 20 in the parking lot. <laughs> Takeaways with MJ doing the slow, the low speed. So you want to start about it? Yeah, so first, this is what I always do with people. I set up two cones, two rocks, two whatever, about 25 feet apart. I was like, hey, just do a figure eight as tight as you can. After one full lap, I called you over. I'm like, okay, let's go. Turn your head more, look where you want to go. So she was going like this, so you're going like, you're kind of leaning and turning at the same time, and by the time you realize you're going wider and wider, then you turned your head and then your line tightened up. Mm -hmm. So you gotta turn your head first to look where you want to go before you commit to training the bike. So your head goes and the bike goes. Mm -hmm. Head goes first, look where you want to go, and then your bike follows afterwards. Mm -hmm. Once you did that, it was automatic improvement. Then, we need to get your speed up a little bit, but you have to get the bike to have a more lean angle. So if you're staying neutral on the bike, dead center with the bike, you want to disconnect, and I say like, be like Elvis. So here's the camera, right? From waist down, you want to move, but you want to keep your body upright, but you want to do this with the bike. Lean the thing over. Like I tell people, dude, I want your foot pegs on the ground. Lean the bike. And again, since I read my comment section, I know what some of y'all are thinking. Some of y'all are thinking, why didn't I do everything perfectly if I've been taking all these classes? Uh, so my problem is two things. One, I have a lot of fear and I have to get over that fear pretty much every time. Every time I need, every class I need to warm up again and on a new bike that's pristine, I was extra worried. But I think my biggest problem is I haven't been practicing outside of classes when I don't have an instructor right there with me holding my hand. So that'll be my next goal now, practicing consistently alone so that I don't have that fear. You want to hear my uh, 2080 rule about what? courses? What? Formal courses, which I advocate nonstop, uh -huh. that's 20%. You have a cup. You take this course, here's a bunch of knowledge. If you don't do anything with that and drink and digest it, which means practice, that water's irrelevant. You will not be a changed rider mm -hmm. when for seven hours on a bike at a course, 10 hours on a bike, two days at a course. It doesn't make a difference what course it is. Even one of the best courses ever, Champ School or American Super Camp, that's two days spending with professional racers. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that information when you leave the course? My vest does not say shut up and watch my videos. It doesn't say shut up and read books. It says practice. And riding is different than practicing. I know people have been riding 50 years and they're terrible. They couldn't even do white belt stuff. I know people that have been riding and practicing a year, like my buddy I was talking about. Within one year, he's better than 95% of everybody I know, including other instructors within wow. a year. Don't neglect your small accomplishments. Like the first time I did that side saddle craziness stuff, I dropped my bike probably six times learning that. Mm. But now I could do it with no warm up like I just did with you. That's fun. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm able to do that. I'm excited. MJ had me today not using rear brake. He says, get control of cl clutch and throttle before bringing in rear brake because rear brake can be a crutch. And I'm like, I always use the rear brake. Yeah, so so it, it, was, it was challenging. It so an easy way to think about it, like I told her, and hopefully this makes sense. If you start juggling, do you automatically go to juggling three balls or do you start with two? Well, it's the same thing. You just want two things to worry about first and build the foundation of clutch and throttle, and that's your foundation. Then eventually, once you could do white belt pretty easily and confidently and consistently, then you can start to introduce the rear brake if you want to. But if you only rely on the rear brake and you only do that, when I take the tool away from you, it's like, ah, oh, I need my tool. I, I needed my blankie. So I took away the blankie so to force you to rely on what's the foundational stuff, which is this clutch and throttle. So I'm going to be basically repracticing everything again, but with just clutch and throttle. Clutch and throttle. <laughs> I'm going to start was... doing that. <laughs> I've never, I've I'm never catching done that, mosquitoes. But now I am.